Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 172. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Doing great. Good. You're not getting blown away by tornadoes? Uh, luckily, I'm okay. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the area lost their homes and businesses. Oh, no. Um, it's a very sad situation. So, um, everyone, think about those people. Yeah, this is it, it is sad. This is kind of the beginning of your tornado season, isn't it? It absolutely is, and we are definitely in Tornado Alley. Oh. I don't see uh, global warming kicking in these days to uh, no. warm it up. <laughs> no, my toes are freezing right now. Overall, it's been a really cold year. So, uh, yeah, global warming. Oh, yeah, right. Global warming also uh, makes it colder, apparently. <laughs> As you can tell, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big believer in global warming. It makes I'm it warmer, either. but it also makes it colder. Yeah, it's called uh, weather. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe in uh, cycles, you know, yeah, natural cycles, and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. No, no. And, Just adapt. Uh, Learn to adapt. Yeah. Here now there's people protesting um, for climate change and creating, like, basically claiming that uh, it's an emergency. Well, who are you protesting? The sun? I, I don't get well, it. You know, have you seen those um, those nature sex people? They put on these face masks like you go underwater, you know, with your little yeah. face mask. And uh, they've, they've actually glued like some moss to it. And then they're like having sex to stimulate Mother Earth. <laughs> Oh, I'm no. I'm serious. I am very serious. Oh, wow. I thought I heard it all. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah, this yeah. this world's gone crazy. It, it is so crazy that it, it is, I hate to say it because it's so cliche, but it is like the Twilight Zone. Yeah. I, I Some stuff just doesn't make sense anymore. Like, if you would have told me people are protesting for something that they're protesting for today, like 20 years ago, I would have laughed in your face and not believed you. But, yeah. man, it because, just gets crazier. Well, and, and as, a, as a people, as a society, aren't we supposed to grow instead of regress? Exactly. You know, all we of a sudden, are regressing at such a fast pace that people don't even see it. Yeah, they don't I, step back and see this is really stupid. I keep thinking about the kids eating those Tide Pods. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell is in your head besides nothing? <laughs> yeah, well, we we are we are regressing. We're we're standing around, you know, um, calling people liars, and then we can't even say what they lied about. You don't get to do that. I don't care if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican. You don't get to call someone a liar without saying they lied about. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's not right. It's not fair. It wasn't right when John McCain said it about George W. Bush, and I don't like much either one of them. <laughs> but it's not right when Nancy Pelosi says it about um, William Barr, the Attorney General. Yeah, what did he lie about? Exactly what did he lie about? I mean, first of all, clean your ears out, because your worst enemy is your age right now. You and Joe Biden are getting out there, you're getting on the TV, and it's not looking so good. And I, I feel for you about that, okay? Because I, nobody wants to get, get old. Well, I think the vodka is also catching up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe so. I don't know about her vodka habits. Um, well, like she, vodka she seems every now and then, she seems but. drunk all the time. I watch her. She almost slurs her her speech. Dementia. I think it's dementia. I think it's <laughs> Could dementia. be. Could be. Um, and, and Joe Biden. I mean, first of all, they both look like you. They blow. You could blow when they fall over. <laughs> and you know that's not that great. Now Joe Biden is ahead of Bernie Sanders this morning by about two four percent. Wow, that's huge! And everybody's going, "Yay, Joe!" No, Joe is the only one that doesn't seem like a dictator. I mean, and he's got a lot of baggage. Yeah, exactly. Because even if you're a Democrat, you are not for communism and socialism. Yeah, you know I don't that get it. some of the young kids that are very worried about their student loan debt are for it. If you just took away that problem or at least made it manageable, I don't think they would be for socialism and communism. Probably not. And Bernie would be sinking. Bernie is sinking because that's the only explanation for Biden because his baggage is unbelievable. you got to remember, back in um, 2016, yeah. Obama didn't want him to run. <laughs> <laughs> and, All you and, need to do I is... I mean, you can say whatever you want about Obama and Biden, but they do love each other. Well, you know, it's easy to see because if you just look at any video of Joe Biden, you would get the creepiness instantly. And, and probably it's a good thing for a friend to tell him, you should not run for president. Well, <laughs> and what an inconvenience that he is the most... Uh, democratically sane candidate right now. I know. In the know. year of Me Too. Yeah. Era, I should say, of Me Too. Because he breaks all the Me Too rules and suddenly they don't care about that. Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't get it. I All this seems to be doing is dividing the Democratic Party up. Yeah. And, and this morning CNN came out with all these polls. They even had Beto beating Trump. Are you kidding me? Are we really supposed to believe that? First of all, a Trump person will not answer a poll. If they do, they'll lie about it. Yeah, exactly. They they will not. And, and, and for one thing, it's you fear come, someone coming to your house and burning it down. Yeah, exactly. Okay? So, right there, understand CNN, Quinnipiac, whoever takes polls, that when you call and say you're from a poll... I know it happens in this house. Right. And we're going to go, well, maybe you're saying that. Maybe it's not true. And maybe if we say we are going to support the wrong person, you're going to come light our house on fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because and things are that bad. Any polls up here in Canada are the same thing. They uh, they don't seem to represent what's truly out there. Um, when the final election results come in, it's it's uh, much different than all the polls were telling people. So, interesting. Oh, yeah. And it was like that. It's been like that since George Bush. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the election between Trump and Clinton was not the first time. It was just the worst or the most shocking. But I'm telling you right now, we're getting a little out of order but, um, you know, we do that because we like to have fun. <laughs> you know, as we learned in Bill Barr's testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee the other day, and it really was must-see TV, um, I had no intentions of watching it, and I sat there glued to the set for five hours. And oh, he had wow. way, way other better things to do, but I, I just couldn't get away. Um, so... Um, we learned that he is looking at what they call the genesis of the Mueller investigation. Why did we need Mueller? Right. Okay. So he's investigating the investigators. That's already started. He's working with um, Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI. He is also has 16 big time leaks that he's got people on. Now you got to understand that we laugh and joke about leaks to the media because they're so prevalent, but they really are criminal. 
Right. It's a federal crime for these guys to leak. And I believe the least, the low end of a sentence is 10 years. Oh, wow. But here's what caught me. At some point, when you sort of look at this timeline, when they actually started um, entrapping, I mean, because this is entrapment. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at what they did to George Papadopoulos, you know, they they have this sexy um, FBI chick, which he says really he believes was a CIA chick. What the, it doesn't really matter. Um, in London, pretending to be a Cambridge research assistant, coming on to him, he said he could smell it because he really is an expert on, like, Middle Eastern, you know, I don't know, governments. Right. Like Turkey, Israel are his two, you know, um, expertise. That's what he considers as his expertise. And they're nailing his butt on Russia. And he's like, you know, first of all, I've never been about Russia, so they kind of screwed that up. They kind of had that on the stop. I thought that was interesting. But when you follow the timeline of him and Carter Page, you got to, everybody goes, well, we, they thought that Hillary was going to win. They did until about August, somewhere between August and October, they didn't believe Hillary was going to win because they were beginning to arrange the insurance policy, which uh -oh. was tie Trump to Russia like he's a spy. Right. Okay? And that's not a conspiracy theory. That's the truth. No, this is what, and this the is facts. also, this is what Bill Barr basically is promising to get to the bottom of. Good. Okay. I can't wait for well, that day. Well, that's got some people nervous. Okay? And, uh, of course, the obvious, you know, Jerry Nadler, he's always nervous over there in Congress. And, and so Bill Barr was supposed to be Wednesday in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, which he was, for five, six hours. He answered their questions. Some of them got ridiculous. You know, you also had several 2020 candidates posturing for the cameras you know, Kamala Harris, um, you had Cory Booker, and um, there's at least one other. She doesn't have any followers, but <laughs> anyway. And then you had a couple of people that always posture, Maisie Hirano. I mean, she may, she's from uh, Hawaii. She makes me so nervous I went and did my hair while she was talking. <laughs> and I, of course, did miss a big show then. But uh, that's like we're sidestepping a little bit. So Jerry Nadler decides that he's going to have staff question Bill Barr in front of the Congressional <laughs> Committee on Thursday. And Bill Barr says, not no, but hell no. I'm not coming. <laughs> okay. And Nadler says, well, I'm going to hold you in contempt. Well, first of all, I can't hold him in contempt because Bill Barr had offered to go. He wasn't <laughs> honoring a subpoena. These guys throw shit out there for the camera. Yeah, of course. And it means nothing. So... You know, one thing I want to insert in here, you know, Republicans, you got to quit just calling names and make points because you really need the independent vote. And now it's not really about Trump as much as no socialism, no communism, right. no Sharia law. <clears throat> right. That's what it's about, you know, and that's what will gain independent vote. So, back to my point. At some point, they knew Hillary was going to lose. You know, now, I kind of thought, even me, thought it was a little bit BS when after Trump won, um, Jared Kushner said, we knew he was going to win. We had told him in October. Our polls suggested so. Now, you know, Brad Pascal 
was famously in charge of all this new technology. He's a friend of Jared Kushner's for the Trump campaign. Right. And supposedly his polls were superior. And he didn't just, he didn't really use polls. He used technology to trace people's activities. And I don't know. I don't know how all he did it. But supposedly he told Trump. And okay. even Trump maybe didn't even believe it. <laughs> okay. Now, when they first said that, I'm like, really right? Because I don't know anybody that believed Trump was a she went. I even thought he could win. But I figured it was going to be close. I, I didn't even figure they would be able to call it if Trump was a winner until the next day. And we know that it was called by about 7 o'clock my time. Right. That was about 8 o'clock Eastern time. So at some point they knew. And they started at the FBI and the DOJ. We're talking Stroke, Page, McCabe, um, Comey, all these players. Sometime between August and October, they're setting up the insurance policy, the entrapment, right. as we call it here in the Ozarks. So now you you know, you know it's kind of obvious. If it's obvious to us, it's also obvious to Democrats. Yeah, I'm not too sure on that. Oh, well, I don't know because they are lashing out at Bill Barr. Okay, the Mueller report, they can't really impeach him. Right. And they really believed in that. Two and a half years, 500 people were questioned. (laughs) You know, they knew about that part. They knew he was busy questioning people. It was going to pan out for them. Right. They are crushed. But they now also see why in the hell did this happen in the first place? Yeah, that's what really needs to happen now. Bill Barr threatens that. And I hope he follows through with that because in my mind, I, this I, is... I hope they're protecting him. This is a hundred times worse than Watergate. Yeah, well, and even Nancy, she's having a meltdown. She looks like she hasn't slept this morning um, <laughs> in days. Um, even worse than, it's the worst I've seen her look. So either she's coming down with the measles or or um, she isn't sleeping. Or she upped her vodka him, intake. Yeah. <laughs> she's coming out calling him a liar. You okay. Know? Hmm. And um, I don't know. I, I, I wrote a little note on, her, on the Twitter feed saying, Nancy, you need to go to your room and think about what, think hard about what attorney the attorney general said. Yeah. Well, he said we need to quit using the legal system as a political weapon. Now think about that. Yeah, absolutely. How did we get to this point that we are using I'm going to have you arrested because of politics? That is a banana republic. Yeah, pretty much. It scares the H E L L out of me. Yeah, and it rightly so. And he's right. He's right, and that's all they're doing. You know, you've got Nadler running around saying, impeach, uh, now they want to impeach Barr, because really impeaching Trump is, there's only 29% of the public that want them to proceed with impeachment. That means 70% doesn't. And, and you know, that's across political lines. Right. So they know that's a bad idea. So now they want to impeach um, Attorney General Barr. Because <laughs> so, he uh, didn't agree with them. Wow. Exactly. And then they also want to um, call him in contempt oh, so lovely. they can throw his butt in jail. <laughs> now, can you imagine this? I mean, this man is so masterful with the language that he he just blows them away. They, they don't have a chance. He doesn't have to raise his voice. He doesn't have to make faces like I do. He just <laughs> uses the language, and he's kicked the proverbial asses. Good. I mean, I, I you know, I don't ever wear people uh, on my shirts, okay? Never. I could wear this man's face on my shirt. 
the way he manipulates, and, and I'm talking rightfully manipulates the language and the law, and he has woven it together in such a way that has me, oh, I'm in love with an older man. <laughs> Oh, too it, it's, funny. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. But here's what I kept thinking, too. Can you imagine growing up in Bill Barr's house as a parent? <laughs> no. You don't get away with anything. No yeah, wonder exactly. are all perfect with perfect jobs. Yeah. Well, I hope he looks deeper into the cause of the whole Mueller investigation. Because it's dirty. He is, but... You know, and, and and believe me, I hear people all over the place go, oh, I want lock her up, lock her up, you know, lock Comey up. And, you know, that's that's great. We're not going to lock Hillary up. <laughs> um, you know, I doubt we even lock somebody like Comey or Andrew McCabe up. But let's lay it out on the table so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think if anybody, I think, Bill Barr would gladly sit in a prison cell for a purpose. Uh, I think he no. is the man. I think he is the man. I don't think he's necessarily going to have to. That that moves us forward into more corruption because they had to be gaining information to make all this happen. Okay, we now pretty much know that the genesis of the Mueller investigation was entrapment, Russian collusion, entrapment, and who they really wanted to nail it on was Trump as a Russian agent, which, you know, I, I, I always think about the article, the little satire piece we wrote right. about, you know, Putin and Trump, two megalomaniacs, you know, joining in any kind of cause. Right. <laughs> is so stupid. Exactly. I mean, first of all, you can learn in psychology 101, probably high school psychology. Yeah. Not that like, ain't ever going to happen. Not like Trump sold them, uh, the, you know, uranium, uranium or anything. Yeah. yeah. On the other hand, it is pointing to the fact that someone in the Ukraine set all these guys up with these dossier people. However, you know, you have the ore couple but you got one a little better than that and we mentioned this the other day and the reason I mentioned this is because Trump is all about his supporters and so kind of been kind of getting in with some of his supporters and trying to figure out how they think because how they think as a group will eventually reflect in what Trump does because he really does care about these people Right. These deplorables, as Hillary called it. Okay, so we talked to the other day about how Catherine Seaman was Peter Stroke's assistant. She was married to Joshua Pickock. Now, we only want to tell what we exactly know right here, and we know that Joshua Pickock was Vice President Pence's chief of staff. He was let go in August 2013 as the leaker the mole right. now we also know that Trump supporters loved Pence and then they didn't when did they stop loving Pence when General Flynn got fired remember the reason General Flynn got fired was not because of anything Comey said or did or his registration for his involvement with Turkey, he got fired because he lied to Pence. <laughs> Only okay. Pence knew this, according to these followers. Okay? And they, believe me, they believe that Flynn has been railroaded. They believe he is the truest American in the bunch. And they believe that Pence might be a mole and might be dirty. So will Trump keep him as his running mate in 2020. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. Oh. I'm telling you what his most staunch supporters believe. Interesting. 
Well, and I haven't it. even I haven't really even seen them call for him to get rid of Pence. But they make no bones about it. He might very well be a bull and General Flynn would be in a lot different situation if it wasn't for Mike Pence. Huh. Interesting thoughts. We'll have to definitely keep our eye on that. Exactly. It is very sad to say that um, we have a new list of the deadliest cities in the United States. And this list is not what it's been in the past, where Detroit was first and then Atlanta and Chicago and um, L.A. It's changed. Now, this is deadliest, not the most shootings. I think if it was the most shootings, it would be Chicago. But so it's, deadliest. it's the cities with the best shot. Well, but it's also like <laughs> they could poison you in drugs and stuff, you know, bad drugs. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, it's, it goes so beyond guns, right? Domestic violence because the jobs are not good. And uh, uh, at the top of this list is one of my favorite cities in the whole country, and that's St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, wow. It is number one now. And I will tell you, as recently as... Five years ago, I was going there all the time by myself in the deadliest part of the city now. Wow. I was making five, six, seven, eight trips a year up there by myself. Um, my, my sons and um, the hammer would definitely not let me go now right. uh, since Ferguson. Number two is Baltimore, Maryland. Wow. Okay. Detroit has dropped down to number three. Wow. Followed by New Orleans. That's surprising. I mean, Atlanta's not on here. But huh. Birmingham, Alabama is. Whoa. And Jackson, Mississippi. And then you got another one in Louisiana, Baton Rouge. Wow. Interesting. Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> Okay. These are, and I, and I, I just can't even imagine what they're doing up there because that's, you know, the university, Salinas, California. Never heard of it. Well, I have, but and then Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's just bizarre. And then Chicago. Now, um, the common denominator. All of them are ran by Democrats. <laughs> oh, wow. So, as Charlie Kirk says, we don't need gun control. We need Democrat control. <laughs> oh, wow. That is super interesting to find out. Okay. Wow. So, threats. You know, there are a lot of threats. There's a lot of violence. And... Uh, the president wants to make the Muslim Brotherhood officially a terror threat. Oh, wow. And, you know, I, a lot of people want him to make care a threat, too. I agree with both. You know, the Muslim Brotherhood duped us 10 years ago, roughly right. 10 years ago. Um, when they started the Arab Spring Revolution in Egypt. Right. They made us believe no Sharia law. It was going to be about democracy and things were going to be better. That wasn't true. They are a sponsor of state terrorism and they should very well be on the terror list. They generate a lot of money, as does CARE, C-A-I-R. Right now, we need to be very careful about naming these, especially when somehow... We got three Congress people right. that are supportive of Islamic groups that are tied to terror. Hmm. And, of course, Sharia law. So I, I, I just can't think of a viable argument against. Yeah, not doing it. Kind of the same things going on in Canada as well right now is, is a few of the, the extremist Muslim groups... Uh, have been taking it a little far and people are starting to call for, you know, um, them to be put on the terror list. So we have a list well, too. Well, we good. A, yeah, we have a list well, with, too. 
<laughs> with Trudeau, I didn't know if you would. Well, I sure hope we're, that he knows where the ex-ISIS are that he invited back in. So um, that would be nice. Yeah. That would be nice, too. And, you know, I, I'm still mad at Obama for getting all those people from Somalia and setting them in one place in Minnesota. Yeah, that's that's a bit fishy. Because that's, that's sure. how we got our government penetrated. Yeah. And nobody does that. I mean, no leader does that with any group of refugees. I mean, that's like, um, don't do it. Um, you know, a kindergarten could figure that out. Right. You spread them out. Just in case. You're not accusing them of anything. You're spreading it out. Exactly. Especially, I mean, we want this country to be a melting part anyway. Well, you can't be a melting part if you keep grouping everybody together. <laughs> True that. So, but, crazy. I mean, this has got to be the episode of Off the Rails. Yeah. Uh, okay. So far. If you support <laughs> abortion... <laughs> You can't think it's a great thing. If you do, you're probably a flipping sociopath. Yeah, that's okay? something I can't understand. If you have to get an abortion, and I'm, I'm talking about for people that believe in it. I know most of our listeners are against abortion. Just hear me out. It's got to be a sad day. You don't go say, gee, yippee i yay ki yo I'm going to go get an abortion today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're you've got a little bit sad. Yeah. You know, like I screwed up. I shouldn't have slept with that guy. Yeah. You know, I should have used protection. You know, you're at least slapping yourself around a little bit. Yeah, exactly. No, we've got supporters that have set up in it looks like a football field, a graveyard with little pink crosses celebrating abortion. And celebrating the dead fetuses. Wow. We kill uh, about a million fetuses a year in this country. So over the last 10 years, we have killed 10 million. Okay? That is not cause for celebration. You know? Yeah. Um, that is pushing it and taking it way too far. Dancing on graves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, That's... little pink crosses, and it is so sick that who... I, I'm stunned that we're even talking about it. Yeah, who thinks this stuff up? They gotta be. I don't know. But... They gotta be demented. Well, like I said, we as a society are digressing. And yeah. what did they do? Mm. I mean, I talked to my kids about this. You know, just don't get somebody pregnant in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Just don't. I mean, do something. There's lots of choices out there, you know? And, you know, be prepared. Don't get drunk and go, gee, I got drunk. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Just don't make babies till you're ready. Yeah, you know? exactly. Be responsible. I don't, I don't even, and I say, then I also say, don't get a venereal disease. Yeah. You know? Do people not talk to their kids about this? I you know, I tell the kids, your yin yang is going to fall off. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah. And and I'm probably going to be, somebody's going to tell me I'm a bad mother before this, you know. And a guy told me the other day, he said, you know, the 1950s call, they want their paranoia back. I said I wasn't old <laughs> in the 1950s. I'm not that old, okay. <laughs> so, but, but sometimes you got to be real and you do got to scare people. Scaring someone, you know, if you, we need to scare our two-year-olds about running across a, a street. Yeah, exactly. They might get hit by a car. You need to scare them. I'm not talking about beat them. I'm just saying reason with them. Yeah. You know, you know, A plus B equals C. Yeah, I'm st I'm just still shocked over the whole uh, late term abortion thing. I mean, exactly. There's there's a time for abortions and legal abortions, so that there there's an option there for for a, a woman if you know for whatever reason. Um, yeah. But the the late term thing has got me. I just uh, well, and and what it. it's done is created a bunch of demigods. Yeah. Okay. You've got this um, Roger Jones guy in Georgia. 
And he said, well, you might as well just kill the babies. And, <laughs> and he, we're talking about late-term abortion now. Yeah. Because if not, you're going to have to kill them later on in the electric chair or some other way. <laughs> Holy smoke. Yet um, he's of the same party that's saying, let's let all these people in at the south border. So we kill our kids and let in some other kids? Oh, wow. Okay. I, I, you know, I, Kim Jong-un is a demigod. When you start deciding who lives and dies... Yeah, so much are, wrong with that. You you put yourself in that, that same situation, you know, and you also become China. How yeah. many kids are killed because they got the one child rule and everybody yeah. wants a boy, so... How many abortions are performed there a year? Yeah, exactly. And and they have done late-term abortions where, to me, it's actually a baby, you know? Yeah. Um, So much wrong with that. uh, You know, and do we really want to be them? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's beyond me. And as, as a mother of adopted children, I can tell you that a lot of people want to adopt children, too. That is an option, and there's not that many. I mean, people are going over to Russia getting them. Right. With all kinds of trouble. And the reason they do that is because the system is messed up. And a lot of the babies in the United States are aborted. So, you know, one of the best gifts of love that a mother can give a child is to put them up for adoption when they can't take care of them. Right. And that's just me saying that. I agree. So, um, but what about Hill? We can't have these kind of discussions about craziness and head cases without talking about Hillary. Oh, I thought you wanted to abort her. <laughs> Is, <laughs> it really late. Late Is it too late? Is it too late? That's a good one. Yeah, it's absolutely a good one. <laughs> well, she says she's living in Trump's head rent free. Now, here we go. Back to Psychology 101. Okay, this is called projection. Uh, yeah. Which really means that Trump is living in her head, Renfrew. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Trump does not think about Hillary at all. No, but obviously, no, Hillary thinks about Trump. Oh, not the time. So. Yeah. I mean, I bet five minutes doesn't go by in a day that he does not pass through her head. I bet you're right, because she's still wandering around going, what happened? (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, and uh, she'll probably take it to the afterlife. Yeah. I I mean, I can just see her. Well, they're up here doing a Canadian tour, so... um, Are they giving the tickets away? I don't know. They couldn't pay me enough to go see them speak. Exactly. So I I don't know. I'm I'm sure that there's some liberal lovers out there still that would probably go to a small school gym to see them. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe or you know one of those um, tiny bookstores. Yeah, Obama's <laughs> been doing a lot of speaking here as well. So now there's people that will pay for him. Well, it's it's pretty. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, he's got a lot of lovers in in Canada. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's interesting that we've got an election coming up, and uh, all of the politicians in the U.S. are here speaking. So it's not like you guys are meddling in our election or anything, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we meddle in elections all over the world. Of so course, why you do. everybody is so shocked about Russia? Yeah. And you know what? I don't think Russia's even, I don't even think it's the biggest problem in Russia. I think China <laughs> is the biggest problem. And Saudi Arabia, I mean, those meddling in our elections, um, the list is probably awfully long. Yeah, the, the ones that are really meddling in, in elections uh, do it via charity groups. I'm talking about Soros. Kind of like the college things. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's awfully involved with CARE, C-A-I-R. Yes. (laughs) Exactly. He's awfully involved with them. So, um, 
Uh-huh. And Trump knows that. And by putting those on groups on the list, you're also putting a little tack in. And Soros is serious, and I say attack because it's not as big as a nail. He's pretty powerful. Yipper. So, but what about the Bushes? You know, I've always said the Bushes and the Clintons are not that far apart. Right. As far as Democrat, Republican, um, they're probably all more Democrat than they have ever been Republican. You couldn't really tell that much difference when... Clinton left office and G.W. Bush took over because right. they're really the same, except for 911, you wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. Yeah, exactly. So now Jeb Bush um, is kind of the Bush family spokesperson. Okay. Okay. He lives in Florida. Of course, he's a former governor of Florida. Right now, Ron DeSantis is the new governor of Florida. Okay. The scientist is signing a bill to um, make it unlawful for any city in Florida to become a sanctuary city. Okay. And Jeb says he doesn't think that's a good idea. Oh, Jeb's yeah. crossed the aisle. I think he's crossed the aisle, and you know what else I think? I think eventually, I don't know if it'll be in 2020, it might be in 2024, Jeb runs as a Democrat. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I, I I can see that too. That's a a long term prediction, but I I could see that happening. So I'd have to yeah. say I definitely agree with that. Yep, and we don't always agree, but it's a journey, and we're all in this together. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor, and Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>